reasons enjoy of architecture is that every project is different, client is different, problem is different, location is different, climate. So it's one of the joy of having something fresh. And you start from zero, but then you will do cumulative studies, because I'm really a student, a perpetual student. I think all, every architect is a, want to be a student because one is always learning something and that's part of excitement about it. I'm very much interested in weaving as a fabrication process. And in fact, I actually have a book called Textile Tectonics and Architecture, which I'm working on. And I applied for a grant to do further research next year. Because more and more I looked at it in terms of material. Uh, it's really the future material. It's in medical and also aeronautical, as well as in uh, structural. It's really coming to force it uses materials very efficiently and it takes a weaving as a different patterning to enhance a performance and you can change the pattern from one space to the other so that you can optimize the performance one can give it a layers or one can combine different materials it's a very uh, ancient technique it exists in every culture every civilization It can be produced in three mode of production, which is handmade, mechanical production, and also digital production. And because it's a weaving is a binary process, like on and off uh, electric circuit, the traditional loom can be plugged into computer right away. And uh, some of the original Fortran uh, pattern books are really from a weaving pattern. So there's a really close relationship in which this is one technique in which if I can come up with a fabrication process, it could be done by an underdeveloped country or a medium mechanical production factory or highly sophisticated production using computers. And also, uh, flexibility is interesting. That's another study I'm doing with weaving, which is, technologically speaking, um, instead of conceiving structure as something static, which resists the force, like you have to have a very big column to hold up the buildings because you're really going against the force. But textile has a way to translate forces, so it dissipates the forces, like if you have applied the material, because it has fibers, it distributes the forces, and therefore you don't need as much of mass and material to act more effectively in structures. So it's called dynamic way of structural engineering, so which means that you could do much more efficient way of resisting earthquakes, for example. Mm -hmm. 
Hurricanes are already used in textiles to protect the houses in Florida against hurricane because it let the wind through and it can be flexible, but it can actually prevent houses to be hit by some of the uh, hard materials like uh, rocks and some uh, flying objects and so forth. And also it could be layered so that it could be densely woven layered, it could be waterproof, but it can let the air through at the same time. It, what I call is a multi-functioning uh, properties it can have. And of course it could be highly insular, to, meaning to have a thermal properties, as well as, as, well as it could be um, a fireproof. So it has an amazing potential and one of the research I'm trying to do is to really use a textile tectonics as a new way of fabrication to enhance the performance of buildings. It's a very big agenda I have. Innovation is a combination of creativity and imagination. And I think for us architects, always visualization and visualizing different circumstances. And all of a sudden, these ideas come together as something innovative. I don't think we're constantly trying to make something innovative, but we are always trying to look for challenges. And so that whenever you actually look at the challenges, one has to go beyond what we all already know. You have to push beyond the boundaries, and that's, so in a sense, it's one is a discipline and rigor, another one is a drive and uh, creativity, imagination. I think those, to me, are ingredients that can drive innovation. Mm -hmm.